Reiter's syndrome is a rare type of arteritis that causes inflammation of the urinary tract. It affects the eyes, the skin, the mucous membranes, and even the joints. It is also called reactive arteritis. It is classified as a rare disease. Statistics state that only 3.5 per 100,000 men under the age of 50 get Reiter's syndrome each year. With me is Alan Guerin, who has had an incredible life. He was diagnosed with Reiter's syndrome. He has overcome heart problems. He went through a failed marriage in the midst of all that. And about five years ago, he was considered dead on arrival. Alan, you've had quite an adventure. It's been quite the ride. So, and, and then what I really liked, I, could you share with the viewer right now that you heard from God, his calling on your life at a very young age at a swimming pool. And I would have never thought somebody sitting in trunks on a swimming pool would hear like that, or is that not what happens? Actually, it was, I was servicing the swimming pool as a service technician for a swimming mm -hmm. pool uh, mm -hmm. company. And, and on the way through the gate, um, yes, I heard the audible voice of God. You so, actually, because often we hear him inside of us, you know, like spirit to spirit. Exactly. But this is not what you're talking no, about. No, no, it was audible. I thought, actually, I, I dropped the tanks, the uh, chlorine tanks, uh, and I turned around to go out uh, towards the truck to see who called my name. Mm -hmm. It was that loud. It was that resonant. And well, what did it sound like? Because we're all like, you're a What does it sound right. like? It, it sounded like a deep man's voice, and he's very stern, but very solid. Uh, it sounded like Alan. Oh, it wasn't like compassion, compassionate, lovey-dovey. No, it was just, I want your attention, so I'm calling you to order. Okay. And uh, when he, he called my name out like that, it was just... Now, w were you like Samuel in the Bible that was like, Eli, what do you want? What's going on? Or was it different? It, it, perhaps. Um, it, I, I thought, it, I actually thought it was a homeowner calling my name at first, but uh -huh. and because it caught me off of guard. And so I turned around to go out and find out who it was that called me, and no one was there. Um, so I turned back around and thought, well, maybe they walked through the other direction. And so I grabbed the chlorine tanks and took about three or four more steps. And again, Alan. And so I set him back down and come out and I hollered this time. I said, here I am. I said, where are you? And no was this answer. to another person or back? Did you know it was God talking to you at this no, moment? No, I didn't know. I realized it was the Lord at this moment. Huh. And so I'm looking around. I walk all the way to the front door. and There's no one there. And so I turned back around to go back and continue into the backyard. And so now I'm in the backyard and I heard, Alan, I've called you to minister my gospel throughout the world. Whoa. Yeah. And at that moment, I knew it was the Lord's voice. Now you kind of dropped to your knees that moment. I kind of well, dropped. What do you do? Because I'm like, that's big. There was such uh, an anointing that came over me um, and such a moment that came over me. I, uh, I knew it was a holy moment. It was a holy moment. And raised as a child uh, uh, around gospel, around the ministry, uh, I knew it was a holy moment, something I've never experienced. But yes, huh. I did hit my knees. You did. Uh, uh, I began crying and praising the Lord and saying, here I am, if you can use me, here I am. And I began to weep and cry. And then something incredible happened. The homeowner actually opened up her sliding door at the back door and yelled out there and um, yelled at me and said, we'll have none of that out here and turned her two little poodle dogs after <laughs> me. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm no on my way. knees. <laughs> I'm on my knees praising the Lord, Barb. <laughs> and here I got these it's two good poodles funny. biting it's at me. It's actually not funny no, it wasn't at funny. all. It was it's, it's actually <laughs> hilarious. But, but what did you do with that? Because is that like, wait a minute, what, what am I supposed to hear here? Or you knew it was God and the homeowner wasn't. How did that work? I really wanted to just baptize a couple poodles at the moment. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, put them under water. Did they water. actually go after you? Yeah, they continued to bite me. Oh. Yeah, they were actually biting me they were on nasty my legs. Dogs. They were nasty little dogs. And it was, you know, it, it kind of reminds me of the scripture when the, when the word was sown, immediately the devil cometh. <laughs> wow. So what did you do with it? Because you knew God talked. You just knew God talked. And, and you know you have to do something, but it's now also like finding, seeking, asking, all of that. Exactly. What do you do? Where exactly. do you go? And so often people think, well, God will lay it all out for you. But I don't think it's all. He will lay it out, but you have to also go after it, right? You have, you have to, to go activate after it. it. You have to activate it. And I didn't have a mentor to show me how. 
all I knew is to get in a secret place and seek his face. Ask him, ask the one who sent the voice, ask the one who spoke to me, um, because I didn't know how to go about it other than to get into his word uh, more than I ever had in my life. I knew that was the starting point. So what's the secret place? Because the viewer is right now saying, what secret place am I supposed to go to? You know, they're like, what is he talking about? There's a secret place that the word talks about in the, in the secret place, under the shadow of the wing of the Almighty, in a place where the enemy can't come. He's not welcome. And it's my intimacy with the Lord. It's okay. my private time. Is it with like the being Lord. in his presence? His presence is absolutely there. And, you know, the word says in his presence there is fullness of joy. Yeah. And it's my joyful spot. Every okay. morning uh, I set aside a time for him and me. Okay. Okay. You know, Jesus said this. Jesus said, I must leave you now, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send one after you whose name is the Holy Spirit. Right. And he'll teach you in all truths that I've spoken and bring all things to your remembrance. So the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Mm -hmm. He brings to our remembrance whatever Jesus spoke. And so I need to be taught by the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, as I begin to word, uh, read the Word of God. Yeah. And so that's my secret place. So what I'm hearing you really saying is you become quiet before God, you become still before God, or you talk with Him, and you start to actually listen to Him. And instead of working in your soul with reasoning, you're starting to listen to revelation. That's exactly what you're hearing. Okay, so that's pretty good. So now you've been called by God. You're not, reason you're not reasoning, you're getting revelation. If I was you next, I would step to the pastor in the church and say, I've been called, use me. You know, that's, that's correct. You I'm know, not sure that was God's way though, but well, that's what we humanly would put together, right? That's the way the order should be. There are many call and few chosen is what the word says, but right. few choose to answer their call. And, and back, you got to remember back when I heard the voice of the Lord, there wasn't a whole lot of pastors you could go to right. and say, I've been called. And I want to hear more about that in just a moment. You have been called too. You've been called to God. To God. Guess what Ellen is doing next? It's not what you expect. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rob Dirks with Serve Partnerships Unlimited here in Sacramento. And a couple of years ago, I met Barb Marshall at a Barnabas Group meeting and got to hear what she was up to. And I gotta tell you, I've been amazed at the stories that she's been able to share with people through getting to know people and getting to know their stories. I am passionate about story, and I believe that everybody has, has a story and they've been through difficult things. They have things where they don't even know if God's even exist or whatever. So one of the great things about Barb TV is that you're gonna be able to hear the amazing stories of people and how God has intersected with their lives and become so, so real to them. And I'm one of those people. God has become intimately connected to me in powerful ways that have changed my life. So I wanna encourage you, go to, go to the website, barbtv.org, um, like us on Facebook, and hey, here's some stories. There's some wonderful, wonderful things out there, and God wants to connect with you. Thanks so much for listening, and God bless you. With me is Alan Guerin, and we're talking about Glory Revive Ministries that he's with, not just about him, but what is Glory Revive, and how are you also able to stand in the fullness of the abundance that God has meant for you? Now, Ellen, you're there, you're called out. And like I said, you, you show up, right? You're gonna preach, you're gonna do what God calls you. And what the typical human thought is, you seek God in the secret place, like you said, but then we take over. Now, did that happen to you? Not really, yes and no. Oh, um, that's confusing. Isn't it though? Yeah. Um, okay. You know, I, I did what I knew to do. I knew, I did a reputation of what I saw take uh, okay. it precedence. Uh -huh. um, I begin to fast because I believe there's That's good. power in fasting and prayer. Uh -huh. uh, I begin to fast and I begin to contact people and say, look, I'm a, a young evangelist. Um, I've been called of the Lord. How and old were you at this I was point? 18 years old. Oh, 18 year olds are excited about life yeah. and they are ready to move. Just full of fire, full of, uh, full of the evangelistic zeal, uh -huh. but I really didn't have the knowledge of God. 
and I didn't really know the Lord's attributes and and so uh, I began to make phone calls and door after door after door began to close I began getting in a car and driving to different churches to meet pastors and I had cards made up and began passing the cards out and then lo and behold a door opened great it was wonderful until um, it was my opportunity to preach. That's fantastic. <laughs> what happened? I went prepared. To, my first sermon, I'll never forget it, was the, on the second return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whoa, why do you start such a big topic? <clears throat> you know, I thought that people needed to be prepared for the returning of the Lord. Okay. Um, evangelistic. Uh, I was after uh, winning, winning people to the Lord Jesus Christ as their only Savior. Um, that was my motive, and um, that's the angle I took it from. I'd practiced the sermon over and over, and I had it down to a clock of 45 minutes. And I stood up and began to, to minister when they finally introduced me. Uh-huh. Finally, it took a while. You it, were waiting. <laughs> I opened up the sermon. And uh, I ministered about two minutes, and everything went blank. Fear took over. Oh, no. That was it. I couldn't minister anymore. And I turned, and I looked at the pastor of the church, and I began to weep. I had my back to the, to the congregation. And the pastor looked at me, and he said, Is that all, son? And I said, That's it. And he was so gracious that he stood up, and he said, well, let's give this young evangelist a hand clap. And he finished the sermon. Wow. He was a seasoned pastor. Mm. And that was my first experience of ministering the gospel. So did you pick it right back up and say, I'm going to do this different next time? No, but uh, and had I had some mentors in my life or some spiritual fathers in my life at that time, I would have. Uh, I would have been encouraged, but I didn't have that. Because a crazy example that's coming to my mind right now is um, when I, in, in, I was raised and born in Holland. And there, when you get your driver's license, you have to be 18 years old. You're forced to go through driving school. It's thousands of dollars. It's mm. like expensive. And then uh, my parents always said, you don't smoke, you don't drink. We pay for your driver's license, which is a big deal there. Mm -hmm. And one of the first times I'm out with this instructor, I don't hit my brakes soon enough. A motorcyclist hits the side of, of my car, flies over the hood, and ends up on the other side. And the very, and I am like, he got in huge trouble with the one he was working for, for not putting the brake on on his side. Mm -hmm. It's different here in America. And then um, the first thing he told me afterwards, get behind the wheel and drive now. And I tell you, I am so thankful looking back at that today, because I'm like, what happened but that didn't happen for you that didn't happen and, and and you know barb that's that i can relate with that story so well it's like the first time i fell off of a horse get back on the horse first time right. you fall off a bicycle get back on the bicycle right and let's let's take another uh, run at it uh -huh. and but that didn't happen i didn't have that type of spiritual guidance in my life that mm. mentor that would say come on son you did okay you know right you you fell a little short but let's get up let me show you perhaps what you could do better next time yeah and i didn't have that and, mm. and uh, did you cry out to god in the middle of that like what happened i got angry <laughs> <laughs> that's the human part of feeling ashamed the, is what i'm hearing oh, the flesh just rose up i got angry and i was so humiliated in my actions that i felt like a failure no one there to lift me up uh, mm. i closed my ears to even wanting to hear from god and i ran Oh, no. I ran. Oh, no. I ran from God for a long 10 years. 10 years? 10 after years. After getting bit in the butt by poodles at a swimming after pool? After getting bit in the butt by poodles. Oh, but that was not God's intention for you. No, it wasn't. No, wow. It wasn't. So what did you do? You, 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 I'm like, how can you fall that far? I'm like, how bad did it get? You know, there was a combination of of things not having the mentor uh, not having uh, the uh, encouragement that a young man leads not having spiritual father was your father in there my father was a, a good man uh -huh. uh, he was not a spiritual man okay. uh, my mother was the spiritual head in the house if you please mm -hmm. she was I'm a son of a revivalist right. and uh, 
I traveled around in uh, tent revivals and such. Um, I was under A.A. A. Allen's tent as a young man. Mm -hmm. um, so I saw the signs, wonders, and miracles. And you still walked away. And I still walked away from it. Now, what returned you to that? What? Because what, you're sitting here in my studio, so obviously something happened. So what turned that around? You know, I'm a, a true example of a prodigal son. Hmm. You know, the word says it when you train up a child in the way they should go, when they grow old, they shall not depart from it. Right. That word is so true. His, I love that word. Oh, his word it never returns void. Right. Uh, but it accomplishes what it's sent forth to do. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Barb, I found myself 10 years later um, in a dumpster, really close to the dumpster. I was standing outside of the dumpster. I'd been up for several days. Right. And I was standing in Stockton. And I was looking at the dumpster. I was hungry. I want to hear more because dumpsters usually means the end of the rope. The end you might of feel the in a dumpster right now that you're struggling with as well. Well, you want to hear how can he get out of the dumpster and how can you get out of the dumpster? Stay tuned. I'm Janice. I'm with The Real Deal with Barb Marshall. I'm the associate producer of the show, and I've been on the set for seven years with Barb seeing powerful stories from life-changing experiences that people have gone through when they've turned their life over to Jesus Christ. And I'm inviting you to submit your story uh, at our website, barbtv.org. I look forward to reading your stories and possibly having you to be a guest on our show. So Alan, you found out you, you were in the dumpster. Now in the dumpster, I you know, Europeans are so literal because the moment you say dumpster, I literally see you as a homeless guy in the dumpster. But I don't think that's what you're talking about here. Am I correct? Pretty close to homeless. <clears throat> really? Pretty close to homeless. I had an automobile. Didn't have any money to put gas in it. I had been wandering on the streets. Um, I got hungry. Uh, I had hit the end of the road. I, I reached the wow. pig pen. Wow. When I see a dumpster, I think of the pig pen. Are you talking about the pig pen about the prodigal son? I am. Is that the same pig pen that God ran out or the father ran out to the prodigal when he chose to come home? It is the same. It well, is tell the me, same. how did he bring you home? Barb, I was standing at the dumpster, really hungry, behind a, a Yum Yum Donuts, which is actually still there in Stockton. Wow. I drove by it just the other day, and what a reflection of my life I, I got and how grateful I had actually become. Mm -hmm. And I looked inside the dumpster, hoping to find some leftover donuts. And as I was looking in the dumpster, a little man come crawling out of the dumpster. Oh. And he looked at me and he said, son, the gold is in there. And I, when he said that, oh. I knew I had hit the bottom of the road. I reached the end of the road. I had reached the pig pen. Oh. It, it just resonated in me. I was no longer hungry. It was the beginning of my turn of repentance to the Lord. And it was, it was then begin the journey back to the Lord. Now, how in this journey back does the writer's syndrome fit in all that? Writer's syndrome had taken place prior. What? Prior, during my 10-year run away from the Lord. Remember, I started running at 18 and I didn't return until I was 28. Okay. And Ryder's syndrome happened prior to that, in the middle of being bedridden, in the middle of being sick, and, and I had lost a, a, a wife, she had left me. In the middle of being in this ailment and illness, and wow. it just added to the anger because I would assume when, when you have writer's syndrome and you're in bed like that, I think something like a year, year and a half, whatever it Correct. is, don't you just scream out to God, heal me, I saw you do it before I ran away? Barb, I was so sick and my joints were so swollen, just the weight of the sheets over my feet, I couldn't tolerate the pain. And oh. I was so angry at God and individuals and preachers and people, where were they now? when I was in need. But you dumped him 10 years earlier. I had dumped him several years but earlier. But they should be running, well, I, I get it, I get it, okay. You, you, you know, um, and I don't want to label him just religious folk. I do. Well, uh, thank I you. Because it's judgmental. It, uh, but, well, but you, know, you know, no, and I get that. There is, um, you know, there, there are those that, 
See, I don't, I don't, I don't minister just in with enticing words. Well, you know, I am the one that just came out of the religious. I was one of the Pharisees up to two years ago, not knowing it. They don't know. They're stuck. They don't know. There are so many people. And when I go to a church and they pray for you, but pat the side of your shoulder saying, you're going to have cancer, you're probably going to die. Uh -huh. There is a problem. There's a major problem. Because this is not the God we're serving that today. The, the God, God we're serving is alive and has the power. But now we need to train the people how to equip them. Exactly. And you knew how to do that, but you ran away. So how did it turn around? I didn't know it in the fullness of how to do that. A lot more than I did. A lot more than you did. I saw it in action. Right. But I, I hadn't got the knowledge of it yet. I had no revelation of so it. So what's the knowledge to know? The knowledge is understanding what is written. Let the Word of God be true. Let every man be a liar. In other words, other men's opinions uh, outside of the Word of God, let it be a lie. I don't bank on that. The Word of God is truth. There are many facts. I, it was a fact. I had Rider's Syndrome. It was a fact. But the truth says, I am the healed and not the sick. The truth says in 2 Peter 2.24 that by his stripes I were healed. I was healed. 2,000 years ago, I was healed. He took his stripes. He thought, he thought Barb, that, that my healing was so important that he shed his blood prior to wow. him going to the cross. Wow. He took the stripes yeah. before he went to the cross. True. And it is his good will that we be in help and prosper even as our soul prospers. Mm. So coming into the knowledge of that, uh, brings the revelation and revelation brings the transformation. So it's the way you think. It's perspective. Wow. And, and the Word of God says, Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, thinking it not robbery to be uh, equal with God, but in a lowly estate. Let this mind. It's a choice. We have a choice and a decision. Now what comes to mind in the midst of that is Romans 12 too. There it is. So instead of being conformed to the world, we're renewed. Mm -hmm. By the washing of the Word. So you were, how, how did you get, you know, I know you're renewed by the washing of the world word, but you're still in the middle of a divorce and I've done divorce. It's no fun. Mm -hmm. It's, it's tough. And everybody's fault is the other one. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then you have writers on top of that. Mm -hmm. So how did Lord, the Lord show you how to be transformed in the midst of that? Well, there was a motorcycle accident years later that we'll have to talk about another time right but that's when my real transformation took place uh, okay. when I stepped into the knowledge of the reality of weren't God's you dead word. on arrival I was dead on arrival that's serious it was serious it was the, it was the very moment that changed my life forever it, it was the moment I became it took grateful. God allowing you to die to finally get your attention you know Sickness and death, I don't believe is from God. God come to give life right, and life allow. more right. abundantly. Right. And so uh, the position, when the, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. And so what we have to do is learn to separate and there again look at God's attributes and see what is the makeup of God? What does he look like? Yeah. What does he sound like? What does he smell like? Okay. What does he smell like? That's good. I've heard the smell of the Lord is sweet. It's a sweet aroma. Alan, there is a lot more to this, and we're definitely going to bring you back on the show. Real quick question to you is, yes. how are you doing today in like 10 seconds? I'm doing absolutely wonderful. I'm fighting from victory and not for victory. I don't allow sickness to come into this realm anymore, and oh, I'm not defeated. I am the conqueror. So if you have one word for my viewer right now, a viewer of hope, what would it be? A word of hope. This word of hope would be, don't lose hope, never give up, continue to get into His presence, and trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not towards your own understanding, but acknowledge Him in all of His ways, and He shall bring things to pass. Wow, that's right out of the Bible. If people want to get a hold of you, what's your website? Our website is uh, gloryrevive.com, and our itineraries there, our contact pages is there as well. Perfect. Thank you for joining us for the show. Thanks for having us. And then, um, you know, I want to just share a quick word with you out of Jeremiah. And um, I was struck by the beauty of this. And it kind of really adds of getting out of the dumpster and getting real before God. God is always real for you. 
but be real back to him. Share your truth. And what I'm hearing right now is there is a genuineness of heart that is important in this. Stop hiding, folks, and give him a chance. And guess what? He's ready, eager, and wanting to get you out of that dumpster. And he's going to activate your faith, but you've got to be part of it to get out. And he will show you the way and how to do that. Restoration promised right out of Jeremiah 33. And this is what he's asking you to do. Call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. Behold, in verse 6, behold, I will bring to it health and healing. And I will heal them and I will reveal them an abundance of peace and truth. And with that word, I'm going to leave you today because if you say yes, if God can heal Alan, God can heal you. Now, we would love to talk to you and we would love to help you. Will you call us? We want to pray with you. 855-515-5550 or go to our website, which is barbtv.org. And let me read this one more time because I want this to just hold on to you. It says, behold, I will bring it to, to it, health and healing, and I will heal them, and I will reveal to them an abundance of peace and truth. My dear friends, God longs for you to receive the peace that he has had in mind for you right from the get-go. God loves you, and so do I. Have a great day. that is searching for answers and it cannot find it in most churches. How do we turn that around? We've got the teaching nowadays that it's a covering over people, apostleship, wrong teaching. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've, I've been assailed many times. Uh, last time was pretty devastating. Uh, my wife of uh, many years, and my ministry partner uh, died. And uh, the man called me out of the audience, said, young man, come up here. There's a high call of God on your life, and we need to lay hands on you and pray for you and anoint you with oil. What is your job right now as an apostle? Right now, I'm watching God work, bringing the fivefold out on one platform Sharing. Whoa, that sounds impossible. No, it's it's not, not possible impossible it's not. with God. But...